Creo Parametric 7.0 introduced multi-body modeling. Let's take a look at taking the bodies from this part and turning them into an assembly. I'm going to expand my bodies folder in the model tree. You can see here that I have six different bodies. I only need to extract four of these because I can reuse two of the different bodies. To create parts from these, I will select one of the bodies and then right mouse click and hold. Here we have the command create part from body. I will select it, then we get a new part from body dialog box. I can rename this. I will use my default template for parts and click the OK button. Don't worry about this dialog box. It's because I still have a, a tree.cfg file pointed to in my config file. So here is the part. If you take a look in the model tree, we have an external copy geometry feature. I'm going to click on it and then select Edit Definition from the mini toolbar. If you go to the References tab, now there is an additional collector in here for bodies. And we can see that it's using the base body from the model multibody.prt. Also, another difference, if you go to the Options tab, here we have a bunch of different checkboxes for which properties are included. And it's got appearance, parameters, names, layers, materials, and construction, yes or no. One thing I have to check is to see if there are config.pro options that allow you to control which of these are selected initially when you are doing this extraction. Let's hit the check mark over here. Again, this is the base part. Let's go back to the multi-body model and then create our bracket. Once again, I will right click and hold and choose create part from body. Let me rename this to the bracket and click the OK button in order to make it. This time I'm going to turn on the display of my datum planes and my coordinate systems to show you that the actual geometry in the body is located offset from the default datums because the body is located in the external copy geometry feature relative to where it was in the multi-body part. All right, let's go back to the multi-body model. I need to extract two more components. I don't need to extract this bracket because I can mirror it later on in the assembly. I just need to extract the bridge and one of the pins. So let me do that real quick and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have my four parts created that I need for the assembly. Let's go to the new button and I will choose assembly. I'm not going to bother changing the name. Let me make sure that I am using my standard start assembly. And again, I get that warning about, hey, you are still using a tree.cfg file. You don't need to do that anymore. Your model tree settings are automatically saved in the Creo parametric UI customization file. All right, so I have my assembly over here. Let's hit the assemble button. I'm going to go to in session to grab the base. And then I'm just going to right click and choose default constraint so that it is located at the origin. I'm going to turn off the display of these default datums from the part. I'm going to leave the display of the default datums from the assembly visible because I want you to see what happens when I assemble. Again, I'm using in session because I did not save the models yet. Uh, when I assemble the bracket, so I'll choose it and then click the open button. And then I'm going to right click and use the default constraint once more. And you can see that the bracket is located using the default constraint right where it was located in the multi body model. Let me hit the middle mouse button to complete the placement. And I just wanted to have the default datums visible while I was doing that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to leave them visible for a moment for mirroring the bracket. So let's choose the mirror component command. In the mirror component dialog box, first I need to select the part that I'm going to mirror, and then the mirror plane. I'm going to use the assembly right default datum. Right now it is going to create a new model, but instead I can just reuse the selected model. And I have the perform symmetry analysis option checked. Let me hit the preview button. Hey, yep, that looks great. Let's click OK. 
And now I've got two brackets in the model tree, two of the very same part. I don't need my datums displayed anymore, so let me hide them. Let's hit the assemble button and once again go to in session. I'm going to assemble the bridge. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can get to default constraint again and hit the check mark. Let's assemble one of the pins. And rather than using default constraint, I'm actually going to use constraints. It might help if I just display it in its own separate window. Again, I keep on getting that warning over there. I can turn that warning off, but I haven't done that yet. All right, so let's see. For assembling this, let's select cylindrical surface and cylindrical surface, flat surface, and then flat surface. If I hold down the right mouse button, you can see that I have assumptions turned on. Also, right now I'm getting a distance constraint. I can double click on the note in the screen and then I will get a dialog box that allows me to change from the distance constraint to the coincident constraint and I can middle mouse button. And the reason that I use constraints for this one was just so that I could go to the placement folder to show you something I did in a tips and tricks video years ago. You can select the different constraints from the placement folder and then hold down the right mouse button and then choose repeat and that will allow you to then select the cylindrical surface that you want to use and the flat surface as a temporary constraint. So it's just a little way of saving some clicks when you are assembling uh, components multiple times. So in this way, now I have my assembly created with the six different components in here. If you go to the Tools tab, there is a Bill of Materials command. We can do this for the assembly. Let me click the OK button. And again, we can just get our little Bill of Materials report in the embedded web browser. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.